earlier on your topic, I remember there was an earlier author, since you're forgetting, might have been awesome, but she said she was very careful never to write a scene between two men because she didn't know what they said when they were. <laughs> so, and Dorothy Sayers had a reply to her. He said, she said she used to write it because she treated them as human beings. She was actually complimented on how realistic her male conversation was, and she was rather annoyed by this because she said, Dorothy Sayers, because she said, I make them sound like people. Are there things that a female character can do that a male character cannot, and things that the female character can't do that the male can? We're not going to tell you about the first no. one. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from the others. I think that there are things that a female, a female character, to go to the most obvious example, can cry. And, but men can cry too. The question is, how are the other characters going to react? And uh, if my 12-year-old girl starts to cry, um, some of the people are going to say, oh, you poor thing. And some of the people are going to say, be a grown-up and move on. If my 12-year-old boy cries, people are going to react in different ways. Um, so I don't know that there are things that you absolutely cannot do, but there are social costs to those things. Narrative costs to those things. I would say game. <laughs> Flighty, cheerful behavior in little girls, or even in, in women. Girlish behavior in women is often charming. Uh, their whole TV shows are just about <coughs> girls, women who act like girls. Uh, Flighty, cheerful behavior in men it's, can be kind of weird. Not that there aren't guys who sometimes act that way, but usually their cheerfulness comes out in, in a different form than like a light giggliness. So that, that's something that, you, a behavior that's kind of normal in girls, if you had a guy that behaved that way, you'd have to kind of explain why. Now I should say, a man, a boys do sometimes act that way. Younger boys will sometimes act in many ways the same way that younger girls were, but you still tend to have less giggliness as opposed to a kind of chortling. I, I, I um, understand what you're saying, because when I think woman giggling, okay, she's doing silly. Man giggling, serial killer. I think one thing, thing I've noticed in dialogue that it, it, it's harder for a woman to have like that sort of like insulting banter that guys can have with each other where they're just like taking the piss out of each other and, and you know and insulting each other but that's not taken personally but sometimes women will be like gosh you guys are jerks you know what are you, you know it's just what especially boys will do and that's just part of their um, their back and forth whereas if a woman gets that way then that she's seen as being bitchy or cuz more often than not, it's because she means it. She's not being, you know, having the banter on. So that's one, I mean, like, I guess language, um, not necessarily profanity. I have no problem with women being, having, showing profanity, but, um, but I think some readers, uh, especially in YA, they'll, they'll, they will have no problem with, uh, with boys using bad language, but might look down on, on the heroine using it, especially in the narrative, as opposed to in dialogue. And especially in YA, they have no problem. With, there is far less problem with boys initiating sex, but if a girl initiates sex, it becomes a book about girls who initiate sex. Mm. I was going to say that the whole, the whole personal interaction thing is a, a major, major thing. We were talking about um, a we were talking at dinner about a famous case where uh, somebody at a convention was acting inappropriately. If it had been a woman acting inappropriately to a man, it would have been a very different situation than the reverse. It would have been possibly, you know, the, just the whole, the whole spin, the entire coloration of the situation would have been entirely different. There are things that women can do that men just cannot do. And there are things that men can do that women just cannot do. And I don't know, and that's, that's part of our cultural thing, you know, and, and it can change. It changes over time. You can see that when you read Jane Austen novels. But, but I would challenge the notion of cannot. You, you can do it. But there are going to be social costs. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it changed. It, 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 the effect is different, you know. I was on a panel recently with an author who had written a middle grade novel. And he had two boys who were the leads in the novel. 
And when he presented it to his agent, his agent said, you need to have a girl and a boy because we need to we have a better chance of reaching the market with this uh, middle grade fantasy novel. And so he went in and did a global change of one name to another name and went back and changed pronouns and then handed it back to his agent. Um, the book has not sold yet. And there is, I think, a shadow of a hint of a possibility of a chance that he can get away with it because it's middle grade. Um, his characters are 10 years old, and I don't think that their gender-based expectations are as well developed as if they were 13 or 16 or adults. Uh, but I automatically reacted negatively to that story. And judging from faces out there, I don't think I'm the only one who does. Um, but it was an interesting question in terms of uh, Sam's question, Can uh, is there any difference? And this is an author who decided no. If that book or it souls, do we want to read it? If it actually could work that the characters switch that way? And I can <laughs> deduce that this gentleman is not a parent. parent. <laughs> he is he a parent? Is he a parent of three boys? Oh, <laughs> but there you are. Agree. No, no, no. It is, uh, it, it, it is uh, that doesn't sound propitious. So, are we coming to a consensus that women in literature are allowed a wider range of emotions? Because I mean, like men can't cry, men can't giggle. If you can express emotions via violence and cursing, be aggressive methods, but that's it for men. Whereas women can be aggressive, or they can be not aggressive. Well, I think it goes both ways. If women are too aggressive, they're called bitchy, but they can be uh, sad or they can be giddy. Men might have more trouble being sad and giddy, but they, when they get aggressive, there's a kind of a uh, boys will be boys. strength to it that often is lacking when the girl does the same thing. Each of these things are generalizations, because we probably know both in literature and in real life, we probably know both guys and girls who, who cross the, the lines on any of these issues. But when you're a writer, you have to fall within the lines or have a really good reason why you don't. If you have a boy who, you know, is giggling all the time in, in, in a very giddy way and a girl who's really aggressive, there has to be some reason why those characters are acting out of the norm and the reason has to be hinted to the reader. Even though in real life, if you met someone like that, they would just be that way and there wouldn't have to be an explanation. Yeah, because sometimes it's, it's um Fiction has to be more justified, I think, than real life. There's a <coughs> truism, but I can't think of what, what the saying is. But yeah, it's the, the readers have more expectations of logic in for characters than they do for people that they interact with. I think it was Donald Westlake who said that fiction has constraints laid on it, but reality does not. Life does not have to make sense. Novels do. The most obvious example of that is dialogue. In dialogue, unless you're trying to make a point in the dialogue, people don't um and like and you know, and, and the interruptions and the, the just the general fluff that occurs. If, it, it's the same with TV dialogue. The TV dialogues boil down tremendously. People don't really talk like that. Do you say goodbye before you hang up the phone? I have no idea. <laughs> on TV, they never do. Oh well, <laughs> you know, it's because every word every word costs money. Mm -hmm. 